Hey, welcome back everybody to Survival Preparedness for Beginners Weekly News Report, something that you may have missed. Now, as I did state, if anybody did read the comments and watch last week's video, there will be no more politics in my news report. Enough of the bullshit, we all see it on TV, you won't get it here. So, we're going to start right off. I want to thank everybody for watching my videos tuning in and watching the news on Sunday at 11 a.m. Today's October 18th, 2020, and let's get rolling on the news. But, you know, if you're on Facebook, look me up. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners on Facebook. Also on Twitter at Survival Preparedness for Beginners. So look me up, hit the YouTube channel. If you're new here, please do me a favor. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, Share it with your friends and family if you like what you're seeing. And this way you get notified every time that I do a video. Thank you once again. So, we're going on the fun fact of the day. All right. Does anybody out there know what temperature is the same in Fahrenheit? as it is in Celsius? Well, basically they broke it down into a, an equation and they set the Fahrenheit equals Celsius. And it solved one of the most genetic equations that are out there. So the temperature where both Celsius and Fahrenheit scales are the same is 40 below zero. Couldn't be 40 above zero, it's 40 below zero. <clears throat> Moving on, I'm going to stick with the weather here. Now, as we all know, nobody really, really, you know, puts a whole lot of faith into the good old Farmer's Almanac, even though it's been around for over 100 years. You know, it's just old and outdated, and sometimes it just seems like that every so many years, they're just kind of like laying out the same reports. But that's here or there, okay? So the Farmer's Almanac predicts, get this, a cold, wild, mix for 2020 2021 winter then they go on to say winter is coming no shit dick tracy apparently with a vengeance wow okay well we already had one hell of a hurricane season this year and what makes you think that winter ain't going to be any better the farmer's almanac recently released its extended forecast for the 2020 2021 season which shows the upcoming winter could be brutally cold and snowy for much of the country. Just what everybody wanted to hear, right? Let's see if they're right. All right, what happened on this day back in October 18th, back in 1867? The good old United States, well, we purchased Alaska from the Russians. That big, beautiful country out there where basically nobody lives but they'd love to go out there and drill damn oil, wouldn't they? But they paid back in 1867, $7.2 million for all that land. It is gorgeous land. Also in 1931, American gangster, Mr. Al Capone. Hopefully all of you have heard of Al Capone, one of the most famous gangsters there were. They got him and convicted him on tax evasion. They were after him for years, and they finally got him on tax evasion. Go figure. And for some of you uh, middle-aged folks, we'll use that word. We'll stay away from the other word. Don't want to be, uh, you know, we don't want to offend anybody. Back in 1969, the original Black Sabbath album was recorded, and that was 51 years ago. All right. Now, we all know how during, you know, every day of the year basically is a day of something. You know, it's National Pancake Day, it's National This Day, it's National That Day. Now, my problem with this is, why can't we just have one thing per day instead of having multiple things per day? Anybody ever really thought about that? And whoever started this thing should be shot. And they screwed up because... Tomorrow, on Monday, there is nothing day because there is nothing on the calendar for that day. So maybe we need to start on something new. 
I don't know, you know, National Prepper Day, National Bullshit Day. I don't know. Comment below what you think it should be because there's nothing on the calendar for it. But this past week, there was plenty. Let me tell you what. All right, on Monday, just to give you an example, not only was it Columbus Day, wait, I know, can't use that term anymore. We're being, you know, censored again. You know, you, you know we can't do this. It was also Canadian Thanksgiving. It was also National Farmers Day. And it was Indigenous People's Day. What the hell is Indigenous People? We'll get into that. On Tuesday, at a Lovelace Day, International Day for Disaster Reduction. What are we going to do? Stop some disasters? I don't know. And for all you men, and maybe some of you women out there, I don't know, and I don't want to be silly that I'm not being fair to both parties here. It was no bra day. So if you missed Tuesday, sorry, you got to wait till next year on October 13th. On Wednesday, it was the Billboard Awards Day and National Dessert Day. Get out there. Get your donut. I heard that uh, Dunkin' Donuts has got that new one out now with the ghost peppers and everything else on it. Strawberry frosting. Mmm. I'm going to go get in line. On Thursday, it was Global Hand Washing Day. Mmm. Wonder what that's supposed to be all about. International Day of Rural Women. Not women. Rural Women. The Country Bumpkins. You got a day. It was National Pug Day. If you own one of those dogs, it was a puggy day. And it was Spirit Day. Don't know what kind of spirit. Is that an alcoholic spirit? Or is that a ghost spirit? Don't know. On Friday, it was World Food Day. Like we don't eat enough. Now we have a World Food Day. Is that supposed to be the day where we actually eat? Or we try to make sure that everybody is fit. I don't know. And it was also National Bosses Day on Friday. I hope you all went into work and told your boss just what you thought of him. On Saturday, it was a National Day for Eradication of Poverty. Now that is right after World Food Day. Does anybody see anything here? We had World Food Day on Friday, on Saturday, it's the eradication of poverty. Why didn't they put eradication of poverty with World Food Day? I don't know. The best thing out of the week on Saturday was National Pasta Day. Who doesn't like some good pasta? All right, moving on. Now let's deal into this uh, We'll dive right into this Indigenous Peoples Day history. The Indigenous People Day seek to acknowledge and honor Native Americans in their history. The day aims to inform people about the history of Native Americans and the mistreatment that they face through U.S. history. Now, we all know, if you know anything about history, and if you paid attention in school, I don't know about so much nowadays because all the crap they teach, but for us older, middle-aged folk, Sorry. You know, we all know how the American Indians and stuff really got screwed when we all showed up. So the Indigenous People Day was first observed in 1989 by the governor of South Dakota. He had to back a resolution to change the controversial Columbus Day to Native American Day. Now, Native American Day would have been pretty cool. I could have dealt with that one there. You know, but now it is known as Indigenous People's Day. I don't see a lot of t-shirts with that out there. It says Indigenous People's Day. Maybe I gotta get a hat made. <clears throat> it's basically, it's still observed on October 12th, which is the same day as Columbus Day. So however you wanna look at it. It's Columbus Day. I don't know, same day it could be uh, the Native American Day, and it could be Indigenous People Day. 
Take your pick. Enjoy the holiday. All right, this past week was also Amazon sales days, and as usual, you know, they turned out a record profit. You know, the good thing was is the third-party sellers, which are the little guys, um, they did really well. Uh, they were up 60%. Uh, they estimate that they grossed uh, $3.5 billion, uh, but the company as a whole on Amazon Prime Day uh, did rose 45% uh, over last year to $10.4 billion. Hope you all didn't spend the money that the government's been giving you. Oh, wait, you're not getting that either. On a sad note, now back in the day, I'm sure if you were walking around in your tight jeans, your button-down shirts, and you had your disco hat on, maybe some roller skates, you were drinking tab. Well, coming real soon, you will not be drinking tab anymore because the Coca-Cola company announced this week that it's discontinuing tab. It was the first diet soda brand that became a cultural icon back in the 1970s. It retains a small but loyal cult following to this day. For years, they have been rumors that they were going to be doing away with this, and this brand was actually introduced back in 1963. So if you're looking to get your tab on, you might want to go to the store and stock up, because it ain't going to be there much longer. All right, NASA news. Ah, we're gonna start heading to somewhere where there ain't nothing but a bunch of junk. So, a few weeks ahead of the 20th anniversary of the continuous human presence in space, the NASA, NASA astronaut Kate Rubin, she lifted off with two uh, Russian cosmonauts on Wednesday at 1.45 a.m. and they flew up to the space station. That was the last time there will be an American on that, as what they have said, because of the price of the ticket is so high. So we're gonna be using right over here off the Space Coast and we are going to start sending our own people back into space from our own land. Finally, it's like, with all the money they spent sending people up there every year, giving it to the Russians, we could have built another spaceport on Mars. All right, now we had the two pieces of junk that's been floating around in space, you know, because now it's just turning, we, we dump all the junk down here and now we're turning around and we're dumping all the junk up there. Only difference is, at least if it falls down here, it's most likely going to burn up before it hits the ground. And if not, well, if you're the unlucky soul where it lands, wasn't your day. So they had uh, two pieces. One was a Soviet satellite, and the other one was a Chinese rocket booster. And they almost collided up there. They it was a near miss. You know, they consider everything a near miss. You know, what does near miss mean? Is it like real close? Or is it like real far away, you know, near miss? Was it just, uh, you know, we near missed it. It's just amazing how the space station hasn't been hit by any of this junk that's floating around up there. And now we just keep putting all these more satellites up there. You know, every other week they're launching another rocket because they want to put more satellites into space so that people in undevelopment countries can sit back and enjoy watching TV basically going to watch commercials and they can also maybe have a cell phone but this way here they can be tracked like we are think about it spacex this past week uh the ceo eli musk his tesla roadster it made its approach to mars on wednesday i'm glad i told you all that there's a few people i wish it was in that car for the ride the roadster driven by a Manic, make, uh, a mannequin dubbed Starman and most of the people that are on the road nowadays I think they're mannequins I don't think they're Starman they got their phones glared to the ear wearing a spacesuit was part of a dummy payload I like the way they use dummy attached to the second stage of a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket that launched in 2018 so it just kind of cruised by Mars thought it would land there ain't that where everybody wants to go now but I guess it's gonna go look for somewhere else because it decided there wasn't any big McDonald's there let's keep going until we find one 
also in more space news, it was a big week for some astronomers and stuff. There was a black hole and it devoured a whole star and they got to watch it from 215 million light years away. That must have been something really to see. They wish they would have put that on TV. It would have been more interesting than all the other crap that's on TV. But once again, you know, we don't get to see that. Astronomers saw the light from a star being devoured and ripped apart by a supermassive black hole using a telescope at the European Southern Observatory in Chile. Although it sounds incredibly far away, this event was the closest death star that the astronomers have seen to date. Oh, and speaking of stars and to date, um... As you all know, well, maybe you don't because you really don't see much of this kind of stuff in the news. Um, we're coming to the end of our treaty, our nuclear treaty with Russia. Yes, just what we need, more problems. At the start of this week, it was widely reported that President Trump is seeking a last minute pre-election nuclear deal with Russia, given the new strategic arms reduction treaty is set to expire this coming February. Russia and the U.S. have held recent talks for its five-year extension in Vienna within the past weeks. But there is little progress despite optimism uh, statements by the U.S. delegation. Russia has consistently pushed for an unconditional five-year extension of the treaty, but it appears Putin is now ready for some level of compromise. On Friday, Putin informed the Russian Security Council of the plans for an extension at least one year without any preconditions. So more than likely he's looking at something where he'd like to build some more rockets. But the treaty says, no. Oh, now, in some Canadian news. Now this should scare a little bit, you know, people a little bit, but you know, hey, you read into this what you want, all right? The power mad state, the governors and the prime ministers across Australia, the US and the UK, Canada and New Zealand may try to push another Dan Andrews style second wave virus attack as part of the Gates Rockefeller World Economic Forum push for global vaccination and the Agenda 21, the new normal and the new economy. Everything is going to be new, folks, but wait till you hear what they're going to take from you to be new and normal again, and it's bullshit. The Canadian politicians in the loop of the COVID planning have been told to their horror of a plan of the response of an international economic collapse involving a federal government offer to eliminate all personal debts of all people, mortgages, loans, credit cards, etc., funded by the IMF under the World Debt Reset Program. Hmm, sounds really good, doesn't it? But here's the catch, folks. This is where they're gonna get you. In exchange, the world would forfeit ownership of any and all property and assets forever. You no longer own anything, but in reality, you don't own nothing. They own you. They own your land. They own your vehicles. They own everything about you. And partake in the COVID-19 and COVID-21 vaccination scheduled which would allow individuals unrestricted travel and living. Remember that, and living, even under a full lockdown through the use of photo ID referral to the Canadian's health pass. So basically, if you give up all your rights and you give up everything you own, they wipe away the debt and you take their vaccine and you're good to go. But it's forever. All right, little money news here. The hyperinflation is here. This phenomenon is driven by the excess of the government spending over tax receipts, which already sprawled out of control in the US and elsewhere. 
it's all over the, the world. It's not just in the U.S. The first round of the coronavirus has only served to make the problem more obvious to those who had already understood that the expansionary phase of the bank credit cycle was coming to an end. You would have thought that was pretty obvious. And by combining with the economic consequences of the trade tariff war between China and America, we are condemned to repeat of the conditions that led up to the Wall Street crash of 1929 through 32. Let's pray to God they're wrong, but you know what? Some of this stuff just doesn't look too good. For economic historians, these should be statements of the obvious. I use that word a lot, obvious, but evidently, obviously, there's a lot of people that don't pay attention. The fact is that the tax base, which is qualified by the GDP, which measures the true rate of the dollar's loss of purchasing power and confirmed by the accelerated rate of increased in broad money over the last 10 years, has been declining sharply in real terms while government spending continues to rise. Wow. Okay. Now let's talk about a little something that's been really going around on, uh, especially YouTube, uh, the internet, and everything else. Um, I'm not going to get it really big time into this. Just bring you a little bit of tidbit information. It's the Grand Solar Minimum. All right. So basically, what happens with this is the Grand Solar Minimum. You know, um, it's a period during which you know the solar activity diminishes, uh, resulting in drastic climate and geophysics changes to our planet. These include increased uh, galactic cosmic rays, uh, seismic activity, and volcanoes, and later often in global reduction of temperatures. So it's going to get a little bit colder unless you live by a volcano, then your ass is going to stay nice and warm as long as you don't fall in the crack in the ground where the uh, earthquake came. The solar cycle is a pro approximately 11 year cycle experienced by the sun. During the solar cycle, the sun's stormy behaviors begins to a maximum and its magnetic fields reverse. So it goes the opposite direction. Then the sun settles back down to a minimum before another cycle begins. So it's kind of like, you know, you speak of these cycles and stuff and eh, it's kind of like your monthly thing. The maximum of this next cycle measured in terms of sunspots numbered a standard measure of solar activity level could be 30 to 50 percent lower than most recent ones the agency results show that the next solar cycle will start in 2020 which we're in right now this has been such a great year hasn't it and it's going to hit its maximum in 2025. All right, in London, concerns are mounting in Europe and countries smash records on their daily coronavirus cases and World Health Organizations warn, warn that the daily death toll on the continent could reach five times its April peak within months. Well, isn't that just some great news in 2020? Um, the roadster's looking pretty good in space, isn't it? Continues that the managed to contain the infection rates through the spring lockdowns and begin relaxing measures are watching the virus return with a vengeance. No shit, Dick Tracy. With Germany, France, and the Czech Republic all reporting record case numbers in the past two days, the fall and winter surge continues to unfold in Europe with increases in the daily cases and matching percentages increases in daily deaths. And one in this country, we don't see what's going on in all the other countries, so we try to get ahead of the ball. No, we like to be behind the eight ball. In the dark days of the coronavirus pandemic, with the death toll of one million was still unmanageable, there was one bright spot. One bright spot. Just one bright spot this year. And it appears that nature appeared to be healing itself. With humans under lockdown, stories calculated that about unusual animal sightings. You know, I mean, when we're not out there polluting and all the stuff that we do to this planet, yeah, it's going to heal itself. It's kind of a common sense theory. You know, if the pollution isn't out there and uh, we're not out there destroying it and tearing it down and tearing down trees and everything else, the planet will heal itself. 
it's going to heal itself one of these days, but it's going to do it when we're gone. You know, um, they had these, uh, there was all these sightings and stuff, the wild goats taking over towns in Wales, uh, and it became a joke about the public's, you know, thirst for signs of regeneration. The idea of nature resurging offered relief from the worries about the pandemic's human suffering and hope for the planet. We have hope. Was nature still capable of healing itself? It's just given some alone time. Won't be long and we're going to give it a lot of alone time. All right. And here's why. All right. If you're looking for any reason to go out and plant a tree, well, here's one. Just watch where you plant it because somebody is probably going to cut it down and build a mall. We need more malls, don't we? All right, if you're looking for any reason to care about trees lost, this summer's record-breaking heat waves might be it. All right, trees can lower summertime daytime temperatures by as much as 10 degrees Fahrenheit, according to a recent study. We have a lot of studies. But tree coverage in U.S. cities is shrinking. Obviously, unless you're blind, you don't see it. A study published last year by the U.S. Forest Service found that we lost 36 million trees annually. That's just in our little dinky country. All right, from urban and rural communities over a five-year period. That's a 1% drop from 2009 to 2014. If we continue on this path, cities will become warmer, more polluted, and generally more unhealthy for inhabitants. So everybody there will die is what they're saying, because you're not going to be able to breathe the air, you're not going to be able to do anything, but you live in the big town. So go out and get your coffee and set up the coffee shop with your mask on. Then at that point, you'll have to wear if you want to survive. <sighs> there are many reasons our tree can canopy is declining, including hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, insects, and disease. Is there anything else we can throw in there? But one of the main reasons is, they forgot floods. One of the re main reasons for tree loss is that humans can't control its sensible development. Yeah, we can't control it because, you know what? We want to cut it down, build them all, and put up in another apartment complex so that we have more places to shop. Everybody is addicted to shopping. All right, <clears throat> getting down to the last thing here. Another uh, Disney release this week that it is um, for all its classic films like Lady and the Tramp, Peter Pan, uh, Dumbo, all those, this, you know, Jungle Book, all those old movies and everything, you are now going to see a stronger advisory message warning of racial content. And that's what Disney released this week. Rather than removing this content, we see an opportunity to spark conversation and open dialogue on the history that affects us all. These movies were made how many years ago? Are you really insufficient over a cartoon? Is it really racist? I mean, come on people. Most of these things were made before we were even born. Hello? It's been around. People need to calm down a little bit. You wanna take everything away just because maybe your feelings got hurt a little. Suck it up, buttercup. It's the way it is. Now let's end this on a positive note. If you go on ABC News, and this was posted on Saturday, you go on ABC.com and look at the news and look for the 12-year-old prodigy kid that Steve Harvey is uh, paying for his tuition and books and everything else. Uh, he's in college at 12 years old. And it's a pretty cool story. It's a pretty interesting story. And it's nice to see that there is still some good out there in this country. I hope this kid goes far. He is uh, studying in astrophysics. And the kid seems to be a lot smarter than you and me put together. So, this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Once again, thank you for joining me for your weekend review on this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. 28, it's 10, 18, 2020. And until next week, I will catch you all 
on the dark side of the moon.